You must have heard of the Konami code. Well, guess what? Fire Emblem has hidden button inputs of their own. This video covers every single known button input code across the Fire Emblem games. Now I know you're probably not as excited as I am, but I kid you not when I say my mind was absolutely blown by some of these otherwise completely innocuous and mostly unimportant codes. But I've been dabbling in Fire Emblem ROM modification for a long, long time, and let me tell you, the fact that I can still learn about this series is random random shenanigans is always fun to me. Anyway, let's go over Fire Emblem's actual secret codes and speculate as to what the devs were thinking with some of these. Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light. FE1 has three input codes, sound test, battle test, and credits. And these three codes are a very tame start for what is to come in the realm of obscurity. They are all accessible very, very easily. All you need to do is beat a chapter, save, and when Anna asks you if you want to keep playing, select no, and then quickly press up, down, left, right, up, and A. If done properly, you'll access the sound room and can filter through music and sound effects. Additionally, pressing start will have you enter battle test, which will just cycle through battle animations over and over. If you press select in the sound room instead, you will enter the credit roll. Overall, these are mostly just neat secrets, and that's pretty much it. Fire Emblem Gaiden slash Echoes. Gaiden also had a sound test input code. To access it, push up, down, left, right, up on controller port 1 upon seeing the 1991 message pop up on screen. It functions the exact same. This actually also works in Shadows of Valentia on its title screen instead. Additionally, Gaiden had an easy mode, which could be selected by doing the following. Place the cursor on New Game and hold Select and Start and then press A on controller port 1. A new menu will appear with the choice to select Normal or Easy. Easy mode allows double experience points gained and unlimited trading between Alm and Celica's parties. Mystery of the Emblem FE3 only has one known input code, and it has to do with aesthetics. On the preparation screen, if you input the following codes, you can change the color tint of the map itself. L plus R plus A plus up or down for red, L plus R plus X plus up or down for blue, L plus R plus Y plus up or down for green, and L plus R plus B resets it. It's really, really random, and I don't know why they came up with this idea, but that's FE3. Thracia 776. Paragon mode is a secret gameplay mode that functions very similar to Gaiden's easy mode. When you are about to start a new game on an empty save slot, input right, left, right, left, right, left, right, then press B. A chime will play to tell you you unlocked it. Now when you play, every character will have Paragon doubling their experience points, and any unit that had Paragon already will now have Super Paragon, where they get 4 times experience points. I'm actually quite surprised they opted to bury this difficulty setting under a code given how frustrating and difficult Thracia can actually be for the first time. The GBA Games, Binding Blade, Blazing Sword, and Sacred Stones. The above Kaga era codes were nice and all, but the following three are the codes that inspired me to scour the cutting room floor and various discords and pulled me into a rabbit hole about input codes, debug menus, and debug maps. Two Sacred Stones prototype builds and Path of Radiance's weirdly elaborate debug mode and battle model viewer. I understand that most people won't be as excited as I am, but I absolutely freaking live for obscure, unused, or hidden content buried in Fire Emblem games. Especially in games where I thought I knew all the secrets there were to know. But nope. This stuff is some of, if not arguably, the most obscure shit ever. But let's start with the least exciting of the GBA trifecta. Forced Movement Skip Code, both in FE7 and FE8. In FE7 and FE8, early game chapters and tutorial mode in the former game forced the player to make certain movements and actions, but there was actually a code you could input whenever you were forced into a scenario like this. By pressing and holding A, B, Start, Select, and any direction on the D-pad, you'll now be able to move out of it. 
That being said, this code, like, didn't really work that well. Sometimes you would break free of a forced action, like here when I try to have Lin not forced to move to the left here, but then it just skips to the next portion of the tutorial while still trying to force me to move here. So it's not that reliable, and in some spots, like here, you will actually just completely hang the game. It's not the best hidden code here. But it does have some practical use, like skipping the forced Wallace promotion in Lin mode. Complete save deletion code. This one blew my mind. If you hold right L and select while booting up the game, as in you're already holding these buttons before the game boots, Anna will appear asking you if you want to delete all of your save data, and she'll ask you again if you're absolutely sure. You can try it yourself. There's manually clearing save data by deleting it in the chapter select screen, but then there's Anna with the nuclear option of clearing battle data, support data, every extra data menu ever, literally just completely wiping your game entirely. While seemingly bizarre and pointless at first, it probably served a practical testing purpose for save functionality and for retail, allowing demo cartridges to be reset completely. So those all could be possibilities, I don't know. Finally, we finish this video on my absolute favorite and mysterious code of all, the Battle History Code Generator. If you go into Battle History and simply hold Select, a code of random numbers and letters will appear. You will be locked into this screen until you reset the game. Reverse engineering this function reveals that each code is basically a mix between a player's battle data and the real-time frame clock and it is alleged that these unique codes were generated to be submitted for a Japanese exclusive contest run by Nintendo? But that is speculation, and I don't even know who wrote that first in the articles that I've read them in. It serves absolutely no purpose in North American versions of the game, but it's still there, fully functional. You can try it yourself. Unless there's a person watching this right now whose uncle worked at Nintendo Japan at the time, and tell us that there was, in fact, some random Nintendo contest, we will never, ever ever know the truth behind these generated codes. To be honest, I think this is more obscure than the Mario Kart Double Dash items. At least those were usable in North America. There are often reasons or conclusions to so many goofy or obscure quirks in these games. But then, the codes. What were they for? Anyway, that's it. That's the entire video. I know that 99% of you had no idea what any of this was, especially nowadays where this channel mostly talks about Three Houses lore and stuff, but this is non-fiction, real-life lore. Isn't that fascinating? I know it's silly to get this excited about random obscure topics like this, but I love reading up on this stuff and learning more about the game that I love so much. And with that all said, I hope you found it interesting as well. Well guys, that will do it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. This was a really fun video to write and learn about like I already mentioned. And I just want to give a big thank you to everyone who has recently subscribed. The channel is like less than like 50 subscribers away from 98,000. So I really hope that this video will encourage people who haven't subscribed to the channel yet, but they are seeing my videos in their recommended to subscribe. It would really mean a lot. The channel is so, so close to 100,000 subscribers and it's just going to be a really, really exciting time when that actually happens. As well, please leave a like on this video and please comment down below uh, any thoughts you had with these codes or if you knew anything unique that I didn't mention yet because, you know, these games still aren't completely unearthed and there can always be something weird discovered at any given point by whoever. With that all being said, hope you have a good start of your next week and I'll see you in the next one. Deuces.